Now, I'm afraid we have less time than the first session. It's already 6.30. I'm in your hands. Maybe I'll have two questions to start with, and then we'll see how we go. All right? Can you give me your viewpoint on what's going to happen to the TPPA? TPPA, all right. That's a good short question. Uh, question to Mr. Ibrahim. Uh, you mentioned that uh, after the swing, uh, a lot of the BN votes uh, went to uh, uh, pass uh, for the Malay constituents. Um, you also did mention that um, PH uh, could benefit from uh, leaders uh, that could outreach more uh, to the uh, Malay constituents, particularly uh, on the uh, East Coast. Um, unfortunately, uh, leaders like Nick Omar did not fare very well in the recent election. So I was just wondering, like, if um, you're advising Pakatan Harapan, how do you think that they can actually outreach more effectively uh, to the East Coast Malay constituents so that uh, the next time around, they will actually feel okay. that um, uh, Pakatan may be more representative of, of their interests. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I buy my ticket this morning just to be here. Very so my good. question is... Welcome. What will happen to Sarawak now that we are the opposition? And Mr. Sufyan did say something that the voting trend is changing. For your information, all the Malay votes also seem to swing. And if you go deeper, you will see what I'm trying to tell you. Thank you very much. Uh, as you know, Trump now wants to rejoin TPP. <laughs> After all, he's a man who has been divorced and remarried, so he has got great experience <laughs> in reunification. Right, I think, uh, yeah, I just had do general comments. I mean, number one, I think the social media definitely is a presence. Uh, but beyond social media, which has replaced the uh, you know, mainstream before as the primary mode of influence on, on the people, uh, there's also more peer-to-peer -peer messaging in the WhatsApp and so on. And political parties have, I think, gotten closer to voters because they have, a, a, they have all your phone numbers, so they can send messages to you. Uh, because you can buy them on lelong.com. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, after the swing to pass, is the, you know, the split in the Malay votes now split three ways, roughly, you know, 4 3 40% BN. 3 pass and uh, 3 uh, PH. Um, and there is a divide between East and West, uh, West Coast. I think what probably the strategies and, and others in PH need to consider is that uh, they need to bring other voices uh, on board. They need to bring you know, particularly people who can communicate with the more conservative uh, segment of Malay society uh, to bring them on board. Partly because at the moment, if you look at the the lineup of leaders, as well as the uh, content of the campaigns and so on, it doesn't really address the specific groups. So I would say even though uh, people like Sadarani Omar had lost, uh, and others have also lost, there's a great opportunity now to bring them on board and be part of the new mainstream and articulate their ideas. Because I think it is quite dangerous to leave uh, just the... Uh, the firebrand types to control the narrative and so you need more diversity in voices particularly within the Muslim uh, society in Malaysia. And so even though Nick Omar says that he continues to want to fight for Hudud, that is his democratic right and people should uh, respect that and he should have, should have space uh, to go out to do that and also be able to argue out his position. So there needs to be a platform for people like that to come on board so even though they may have lost. I think the last point uh, with respect to Sarawak, I'm not sure. As I'm sitting here, I just got a WhatsApp message saying that Sarawak has decided to form their own block. So they have just left BN. So uh, trying to confirm that. But if that has happened, you know, Sarawak will be what Sarawak wants it to be. Sarawak will, I think, the political leaders in Sarawak will determine uh, what's best for their people. After all, yeah, the, lead, the population in Sarawak, majority of them voted. Uh, for the 19 Barisan National MPs. So they have to determine what's best for them. But I, the hope is that if they become more PH friendly, then they must also abide by the new sets of rules and regulations that it is not simply uh, forming a block so that they can uh, get close to the federal government, which is understandable. But I think there is also a need to understand that the rules have changed. Uh, and that uh, there is a more, there should be greater scrutiny in terms of how things are done uh, over there. I think largely, 
the May 9 outcome shows that voters actually respond to incentive of the electoral system. First past the post, demand voters to concentrate their votes on the top two fund runners. And so you look at the Malay tsunami on West Coast, the two fund runners is Barisan National and PH, and PH got more votes, got more seats. And in East Coast, it was uh, BN and PASS, and PASS did well. Uh, the question where to move from here, um, I think we need to put one context into the low support for Malay votes for Pakatan. Uh, because the system has been so much tied to the state, anyone that controls the state, I think would have a sizable support by default. And this is a part of the votes that would actually be transferred to PH, but it may not make them a majority. The question next is about what kind of opposition PH wants in Malay politics. We have two problems. You probably would not have a new opposition on the non-Malay ground so soon. MCA, Gerakan, MIC, SUPP, all these are discredited. They are museum parties now. Uh, but on the Malay ground, you have two alternatives. One is AMNO, the other one is PASS, in, uh, talking about West Malaysia. Uh, it seems like some people in PH thinking of absorbing AMNO. Now, the danger of that is that you end up having PASS as the main, main opposition. PASS with no track record in economic development, no track record in policy innovation except uh, maternity leave in Kelantan. Uh, it's very likely it go back to pursuing Amanat Hadi. That would be a disaster for Malaysia. And if that happened, PH would just have to match it. So you're going to have more expansions of Sharia loop. The way out would be to give the state governments, including um, the, the opposition party, including uh, state governments run by AMNO, a fair chance to survive and get on to a healthy competition. And in that sense, PASS may have to match coming to the center and match in that, that competition or stand a risk to be vino out. So you end, if, it, if you end up having Basatu uh, or PH overall against AMNO, uh, that's not the worst case. Because eventually, even you have Malay agenda, Malay agenda would become a competitive issue. And I feel for competition rather than a claim for monopoly. And what this country really lacks is political competition. To move away from the Malay agenda, you need to change the society realities. That would perhaps take another 10 years. What is important now is to make sure our political system do not, does not give the wrong incentive. Absorbing, keeping a highly concentrated a uh, high degree of concentration, power, high degree of power concentration does not only have the negative repercussions in the economic sense, as Prof Wu just mentioned, but it has huge problem with the political sense. Uh, Basatu, sorry, PH really need to think through what kind, of what kind of opposition you have. You don't have a choice to say, I do not want opposition. It's just always what kind. Uh, back to Sabah and Sarawak, if the situation is real, that uh, what uh, the news that what Ben has got is real, then very likely we're going to see an interesting situation. You see a kind of two-party system in the two-state with PH as a pro-federal uh, block, and then you have a, a, a state block in Sarawak would be the, the OBN in Sabah, already you see it in PBB, PBS. That would be just another kind of identity politics. It's not healthy, but to move away, again, we need to think about what kind of incentive to put in. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've come to the end of a nice long day. Very stimulating. The panelists have done a great job. And I think increasingly, 
we won't talk about Malay, Chinese, Indian, Karzan, Murut agendas, but a Malaysian agenda. For, and we have come a long way with May 99. Thank you very much to the panelists. Give them a big clap. And thank you all for attending. See you soon at another forum.